welcome once again to Bethany Virtual Cafe as we celebrate the third Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year C. But before we begin with our regular Sunday reflection, I'd like to make a shout out to my classmates who are taking the online clinical pastoral education uh, spearheaded and uh, run by the chameleons. So a special shout out to Mom Flora Calieja and also to Father Benji, to uh, Father Anton Sprachanite, and also Brother Joseph. So good luck to us and my prayers uh, will always be uh, for the success of this program. So Bethanians, please uh, do pray for us as we complete this uh, first quarter of the CPE program. If anybody of you would like to help us fulfill our requirements, contact us uh, maybe for spiritual direction or for counseling or to talk about anything in your journey as a Catholic or maybe in your day-to-day -day journey. Uh, I'll make myself or we can make ourselves available for you. So just check the uh, uh, description below and uh, see how you can avail of the free service and also the free counseling that we can uh, do uh, for you at an appointed time, of course. Now, this Sunday as we celebrate the third Sunday in Ordinary Time, I'd like to begin my reflection with a wonderful letter. This is a letter from a niece of mine whose name is Easy. Hello, shout out to you, Easy. This letter is a fruit of her own reflection at the time when uh, she was confined at home because of the pandemic and that uh, they were not allowed to go out for in-person uh, learning at school. And so it would be wonderful for us to hear from a 14 years old of how she feels and how she actually addresses the Lord to intercede not only for her but also for those people around her affected or deeply affected by the pandemic. As we celebrate the ordinary time, I find the consent and the sincerity of her letter very appropriate for this Sunday's theme. And so let me begin by reading her letter. And I quote, Dear God, thank you for giving us light, hope, comfort, and love. No matter how many faults or mistakes we have made, you still choose to stay beside us. You continue to give us strength and protection, especially in this time of the pandemic. We thank you for the countless blessings, support, and guidance. God, we may have experienced difficulties under different situations, written unique stories, and hard-to-handle struggles. But you continue to lead us to the right path to end the difficult journey. In this time of the pandemic, most of us coming from different walks of life have been suffering from physical and mental health issues. We may tend to push ourselves to our limits, which can sometimes result in choosing the wrong decisions, but you intervene in our lives to see a silver lining in the midst of them all. You allowed us to fall and learn from them and take responsibility for those failures. Most of all, I mean, all those wrong decisions you believed in us. You have faith in us that we can get through anything with you by our side. I ask you, O Lord, to guide and heal those who are suffering mentally and physically. Be their shoulder, their hope, and comfort in their time of need. Please heal those who are sick, lying in the hospital beds. Also, Touch the lives of those who feel alone and are in their darkest moments. We give thanks as we praise our Creator. We ask you for your forgiveness for the sins we may have committed and cause other people harm. Thank you 
for your ever loving presence. Thank you for the gift of life, peace, understanding, and happiness that you unceasingly give to us no matter what. God, thank you for all that you've done. I love you very dearly, easy. Wonderful, isn't it? And I think that I am a proud uncle right now just by reading and hearing this letter from my niece. I think that this letter somehow re-echoes the very feeling of Ezra in the book of Nehemiah in this Sunday's uh, reading. You know, Ezra, together with the people who has been exiled to Babylon, he felt uh, disheartened inside of him because he thought and saw that his own people seemed to become more like strangers in their own land. They hardly know their customs, they hardly know their traditions, they hardly know the things that uh, they used to uh, know from way back. And so it is his goal, therefore, to rectify it and to help them re-identify themselves after the Savior. And so as we celebrate the ordinary time, it is a wonderful time for us also to rectify and somehow go back to the true identity that we have. We are disciples of Jesus. We are followers of Jesus. And so there are certain qualities, there are certain values that we follow. There are certain values of the kingdom out of Jesus' example that we have to practice, that we have to exercise if we so want truly to become authentic disciples of God. And so this Sunday, I'd like to point out three values, qualities that could help us identify our true nature as disciples of Jesus. Well, the first value is no other than humility and modesty. Well, humility, as we all know, is the mother of all Christian virtues. And so humility from the Latin word humus, meaning ground. So when we are grounded, when we know our beginning, when we know our source of life, where we come from, when we regard our God as our creator, then we recognize our own weaknesses. We recognize our own limitations. And in so doing, uh, recall and understand our humble beginning. That we come from God. We are created by God. And everything that we are right now is therefore gifts from God. So let us not forget that. Because humility as the mother of all Christian virtues is the very source of our Christian living. Jesus himself comes or came from a humble family. We've learned that during the Christmas season. Jesus was born in a manger. Jesus was born from a humble family of Joseph and Mary. Joseph and Mary were not rich people but they are very rich in grace. They have been made great out of their humility. Modesty, on the one hand, is a value where we recognize the importance of living a life that is pure, living a life that is true to the very example of Jesus. Jesus who is pure, Jesus who is innocent, Jesus who is kind in his own way. As it is said in scripture, Jesus emptied himself and took the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of men. Born in the likeness of men. Jesus was born among us. Jesus was born to become one like us in order that we may find a true example of true humility, modesty, 
and a true example of God's own divinity. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. To be poor in spirit is to be humble. To be poor in spirit is to be modest. So the second quality that we can best identify ourselves if we so want to become true disciples and authentic disciples of Jesus is to be spiritually motivated. Our life must be nourished by the Spirit or the Spirit of God. Our life must be compelled by God's almighty presence that our soul in fact becomes temples of the Holy Spirit. A true disciple of Jesus is someone who is indifferent to the standards of the world, is not affected by trends and fashion. A true disciple of Jesus is deeply affected and is deeply inspired by the Spirit. Our spiritual disposition must always be attuned to the Spirit of God. In an article on Time magazine from a long time ago, Mother Teresa was asked about materialism of the West. She contends that the more you have, the more you are occupied. But the less you have, the freer you are. Poverty for us is freedom. It is a joyful freedom. There is no television here to this. Uh, so know this, know that. There is, uh, this is the only fan in the whole house and it is for the guests. But we are happy. I find the rich poor, she continues. Sometimes they are more lonely inside. The hunger for love is much more difficult to fill than the hunger for bread. The real poor knows what is joy. When asked about her plans for the future, she replied, I just take one day. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow has not come. We only have today to love Jesus. Now, is there anyone in this room as rich as Mother Teresa? If we are so longing for true happiness, then aim for joy. Because joy makes you happy inside that joy that you feel inside is something that god can only feel is something that god can only give us and that joy could not be provided by things in this world that joy is god given now the third quality of a true disciple of jesus is to be effective proclaimers of the word now when you speak about proclaimers we do not only refer to those uh, evangelists or evangelicals who can uh, preach and quote scripture to the letter, who can memorize chapters and verses, who can uh, simply narrate you know, uh, lines from scripture. But when we speak about proclaimers, we speak about those people who lived their lives uh, practically living the gospel it is to be a true witness it is to be somebody who walks the word of god who walks the talk ignorance of scriptures is ignorance of god and true indeed if we want to know the savior if we'd like to love and serve the savior it is always important to begin from the first stage of wisdom and that is knowledge. To know the truth, to know Jesus, to know Him as the Word, to know Him as the source of all truth. In Jesus, we find the true way, the true life, and the true light. Now, allow me to go back to the letter of my needs. And uh, let me highlight the part that sums up the very qualities I just mentioned. And I quote, in this time of the pandemic, most of us coming from different walks of life have been suffering from physical and mental health issues. We may tend to push ourselves to our limits, which could sometimes result in choosing the wrong decisions. 
but you intervene in our lives to see a silver lining in the midst of them all. You allowed us to fall and learn from them and take responsibility for those failures. Most of all, amid all those wrong decisions, you believed in us. You have faith in us that we can get through anything with you by our side. So, I think that this is the heart of the letter. And in this very heart of the letter, you can see humility and modesty. The recognition of God who is always there. The recognition of God who is greater than any of us. The recognition of God as our Savior and Creator. Now, it is also spiritually motivated well, for a 14 years old, I would like to give her very good credit for this. Because as a 14 years old, she knows her spirituality. She knows that God is the motivator and that God intervenes in every aspect of her life. And in so doing, she knows that God will always be there for her no matter what. And finally, of course, there is that element of being a proclaimer to live a life according to the gospel, to recognize her failures, and in so recognizing one's failures, one stands or one stands by those failures, take responsibility for those failures, and ask the Lord to constantly be her guide. So may this Sunday be an eye-opener to all of us that as we go back to the ordinary time, we look into, once again, our own personal identity, our own Christian and Catholic identity. Who are we as disciples of Jesus? Who are we as followers and worthy servants of God? Who are we as baptized? Catholics. God bless us all. For our image and symbol or symbol this Sunday, it would be the Bible or simply the Word of God. Feeling bad about how His people are turning to uh, misidentify themselves from their true nature and identity, uh, rectify the situation by reading to them the Word of God and by reminding them of how much God has continued to intervene in their lives and has continued to love them even in the midst of exile. And so the Word of God gives them comfort. The Word of God directed them once again to their true identity. And may we continue to really discover wonderful qualities that would make us uh, authentic disciples of Jesus. Till next time, Bethanians, and may we not forget who we truly are. God bless us all.